Hello, DHS friends. Welcome to the third event of Sri Lanka Schools Battle Series. I'm Lakshita, your host and the organizer of the event. I would like to thank you all for tuning in and I hope you guys will enjoy our live broadcast. After the first two events, we have Tisagaheva Vasam at the top of the leaderboard with 11 points and Lyceum International School Lugegoda leading the competition for the best school with 27 points. You guys can have a look at the complete leaderboard and get all the details about this series of events from my Facebook page. I will post the link of it in the description below. So today we have around 75 players, which is great joining in for the event. And I will quickly go through our top 10 players and see who they are. We have Dungeon 16 2000 uh, as the highest rated player and Vita Narachi, Dark Alive Spirit, Chenuka, Kosala Sandeepa, Ampukure 2, Taru 2005, Chess 454, Palita and Ruvitu 2006 as our top 10 players. So the games are going to start in another two seconds. And I think we have a lift off. So we'll go straight into these games. We have Vitan Arachi playing against Dungeon in the first board, Chenuka against Dark Alive Spirit in the second board, Hashan J against Kosala Sandeepa in the third board. So we'll have a look at the top three boards first. Uh, we have a London system or a Karokan, yeah, Karokan exchange. Uh, Vitan Archie has gone for, I think, E4. Um, so they are playing it out very quickly, very fast. Let's have a look at Chenuka's game as well. Chenuka versus Dark Alive Spirit. We have a Sicilian close and Black has chosen the e6 d5 break. Um, well, I think white has a decent position with the two bishops. Um, but black has good center control and some advantage in space. So it's going to be a very exciting game. Let's move on to the third board. We have Hashan J battling it out against Kosala Sandeepa. They are also playing out uh, probably a Sicilian, a Sicilian uh, hyper accelerated dragon. And I expected queen d4 from white, but he went for uh, queen e2. Now h3, g4 uh, is expected. Uh, so black is attacking the c4 pawn as he usually does. So let's go to our home page and see what's going on in the fourth board. Ampukure 2 is battling it out against Taru 2005. Uh, my apologies for, uh, for everyone if I'm not pronouncing your names correctly. Some uh, usernames are not easy to pronounce. They are somewhat strange for me. I thought I'm the only one with a strange username, <laughs> but no. Um, so they are playing out an open position. So knight e5 was played, defending the c4 pawn and attacking the bishop on d3, sorry, on f3. Rook e1, pinning the knight, and I expect knight fd7 from black and something like queen f8 aiming at queen c5. So black is not in a hurry to unpin herself. So let's go back to the top board and see what's going on in there. Um, white has won an exchange, but it's a very closed position. It, ma it makes things a little bit difficult for white now black is threatening knight g3 to win back the lost exchange. Um, I expect rook 
no, queen, e, queen f2 was played. Uh, I think the f5 knight gives black enough compensation for the sacrificed piece. Um, sooner or later, white will have to think of breaking open the queen side uh, to create some play since he has the advantage in material. Yeah, that's what White is trying to do. White is going for some C4 break. Um, so yeah, so we'll see whether White will be able to convert his advantage in material into a win. In the meantime, Chenuka and Dark Alive Spirit, they're playing an exciting game. The moment we joined, Dark Alive Spirit managed to win with an extra bishop. So let's have a look at the third board. Hashan against Kosala. Um, yeah, it's going to be a pretty even end game. I'm not sure about rook c8 because of c6, yes. Uh, but white is low on time. That can be a disadvantage for white. Uh, what will happen if black plays bishop takes is this? No, black does not go for it. Whoa, why is sacrificing the pawn? Yes, of course, the pawn is untouchable because of rook takes e8. So black goes for bishop d7, rook c1. And now I think king e5 with the idea of playing king d6 and winning the pawn uh, can equalize things. Oh, yeah, it can even be better. No, that did not happen. I missed bishop b7 completely. And now I think white is winning, yes. Black can try rook e2, attacking f2 and a2, but I think black has enough uh, material to convert it into a win. Unfortunately for black, he blundered at once. So I predict a win here for Hashan. Um, Ampukure versus Taru. Um, so black is two pawns ahead at the moment, but white has some pressure. Um, but I think black is fine. Black is fine. Black can think of playing knight e5, protecting the pawn on f7, and then going for an attack on white skin if possible. Knight f2, king h2. Is queen e1 working here? Um, queen e1 intending queen h1 mate is an interesting choice. Yes, black goes for it. Um, white can think of playing. Yeah, it's a tough decision for white. Well, if white goes g4 here, what will happen? Yeah, white has to play g4. And now knight d3, yeah, black wants to play queen e5 and exchange uh, the queens because that will lead to a completely one endgame for black. So in the meantime, uh, with Anarachi and Dungeon are still playing, um, as I told you before, uh, it's not easy for white to win from such positions, but now I think black has gained total control over the position and is clearly placed better and will be fighting for a win. I don't think that black is in trouble at all. Let's move on. So Hashan has won against Kosala. We have a result there and I think we can get few new games. Let's have a look at chess 454 against Palitha and we have a newcomer to our events and to our top boards. That's Mr. B.I.G. But let's have a look at this game first. So this is a bishop versus knight end game with white having an extra pawn. Um, yeah, white has an extra pawn, a passed pawn on the D file, but black is dominating the center, um, which makes things difficult for white because most of white's pawns are also blocked on dark squares. 
I think there's no way that White can lose it, but it's not easy for him to convert it into a win as well. Uh, Black is playing on increment. That will give White some additional chances. Um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see how Mr. B.I.G. is doing against Hashan. Um, they have entered this end game where White has an advanced protected fast pawn. Yeah, I think he will, he will be able to push it. Yeah, so the pawn is on C7 now and it's going to be an annoying piece for Black and I expect Rook C5 or Rook D, D1, yeah. Yes, so black has to give up the rook and I predict a win for white in this particular game. All right, let's see how Vitana Rachi and Danchan are doing. They are playing a very, very intense game. It's very, um, uh, very entertaining for as as viewers and uh, I'm very happy to see these kind of games because the players are fighting as well as they can. And uh, this is definitely a thrilling game to watch. I think Black is doing totally fine. Uh, yeah, knight e5, knight g4, and Black will be the one who is playing for a win. Um, okay. Ooh, Black blundered with king f5. That's bad news for dungeon. Uh oh, that's really bad news. <laughs> okay, such things can happen. Such things can happen in Blitz Chess. I feel very sorry for Black after playing such a good game. And in the meantime, uh, Taru, uh, is that a win or a draw? I think that's a draw. No, it's winning, yes. White has a light square bishop. I saw it as a dark square bishop. Okay, so this is winning for Black. Uh, it's time for us to have a look at new players and new games. We have Dinot Abe Ratna playing against Vitan Arachi. So Vitan Arachi is playing his um, hippo, his signature opening, uh, which is a very good opening for Blitz Chess. I think I uh, told you this even before in the previous uh, broadcast when he played the second event, and he won many games with it. Um, so we have Rubidu against Hashan. We are seeing uh, Rubidu for the first time at the top boards. So he has gone for an attack. He has a pawn on f5. Uh, I'm not sure about queen b6 though. Can't white play bishop f2 and simply win the bishop on e6 or c5 for that matter? Yep. Uh, it seems like, whoa, it's not that simple. So rook b1, bishop c3, knight e4. Uh, yeah, black has bishop d4. Whoa, this is brilliant play by Hashan. I think he took a calculated risk. So in hindsight, I feel like bishop f2 should have been played. In hindsight, yes, because it doesn't allow black to play bishop d4. I think white is slightly better after knight takes c3, bishop takes b1, and rook takes b1, but this game is going to be um, a tough battle for both sides, for sure. We'll see how these two players are doing. Yep, we have a result there. Taru has managed to win the first game against Ampukure 2. In the meantime, Chess 454 has won against Palita. Uh, we have Dinot against Vitana Arachi, battling it out. And we can see uh, typical Vitana Arachi has gone for an all out attack on the king side. And let's have a look at a few more games. We have Dark Alive Spirit playing against Chess 454 at the top board. And we have Daham. For the first time, uh, I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry about that. Um, so we have, yeah, 
we have dark colored spirit against chest 454. Uh, just give me a second. Yep. Here we go. Um, well, probably a Sicilian con by the look of it. And white has gone for a English attack type of structure. Um, yeah, it's a very complicated game. Well, it seems like white can stick with her kingside attack with h4, h5 and playing for g6. In the meantime, black will go b4 and try to open up files on black's queen side since white's king is placed there. Um, all right, so we'll switch to Taru versus the hum. Um, so these two are okay. So I think Taru had played the king's Indian attack, but at the moment, black is an exchange ahead. So black is attacking white's knight on f4 with his last move, g5. Knight d5, yes, I think that's the most logical move. But now queen e1 check, rook f1. Isn't it black winning after rook takes f1, bishop takes f1, and rook f8? Yep, yeah. if d4, yeah, that's tricky because bishop takes d4 doesn't work because of queen takes d4 check. Did What's wrong with me? Did I miss something? Isn't queen takes d4 a check? Oof. Yeah, it's hard to understand. Anyway, we'll see how Dinod and Vitana Archie are doing. They are still playing it out. Whoa, look at the king. The white king on e3. It has moved away from its castle position and it's almost in the center. Uh, Vitan Arachi is a good attacking player and he was threatening b4. I think that's why white had to play a move like rook f2. And now he is trying to get his queen up to b6 with a decisive effect. So white has to do something about it. Which doesn't look easy. Maybe queen, no, queen c1 doesn't work, yeah. Because after queen b6 and king d2, the rook on f2 would be hanging. And that's why white had to play rook f1. I think black is winning here because black is up a piece after e takes d4 check. This is brilliant play by Vitana And now knight g2 check is also there, winning further more material. Yeah. So he's a fierce attacker and I think his style suits blitz really well. Uh, in the meantime, we have a result. Rubitu has managed to defeat Hashan. Whoa, he had ran out of time. I wonder whether there's an issue with the connection because it's not a position that you typically run out of time with Rubidu having two minutes. All right. We have Dark Alive Spirit still battling it out against Chess 454. It seems like black has opened up an attack. Um, yeah, for queen c4, why does knight b6? Queen a2, yep. But queen a1 is not a threat. The bishop is covering that square. Queen a8 check, does it work? No, white goes for knight takes d7. Bishop b6, whoa, a nice checkmate. I did not see that coming. All right. So that's it. Dark Alive Spirit wins another game. Um, and Daham has won against Taru. That's a big result. That's really a good one for Daham. I think we will see him playing more on top boards today. We have a newcomer to our top boards. We have Mesada playing against Hashan. Look at the position of those bishops. You don't see it that often in right? maybe in studies. Uh, this is actually the very first time that I've seen this ever happening in a real game. Bishops on e4, e5, f4, f5. Wow, okay. So it's an equal looking position. 
and black attacks white's rook and the rook has to move away now i expect bishop takes f4 yeah creating some weaknesses in white's pawn structure and now maybe a6 with the idea of playing rook kd8 black would love to get one of his rooks on d2 so even the time is roughly equal what am i talking about there are tactics yeah bishop takes a2 bishop takes c6 um but is this really good for black i doubt it because now after b takes c6 and rook takes a2 black's pawn structure is not that great after all rook uh, a6 with the idea of playing rook a d8 hmm, looks better all right so we have a result here vitan arachi has won against the north so let's get rid of that board and rubidu hashan we saw that rubidu won against hashan so it's time to load more games we have daham playing against palitha and lama have again shakya for the first time at the top boards and nartavi and chenuka nartavi we are seeing for the first time at the top boards in today's event so daham and palitha looks like a king's indian gone really well for black i must add um yeah i think white is in trouble um yeah even though black has paid a price to penetrate into white's position i think black can be happy well bishop g4 is that a move bishop g4 since rook takes g4 fails due to queen takes f1 check followed by queen takes a1 yeah bishop g4 was played all right so let's move on to the next game yeah it's a result and we'll have a look at nartavi against chenuka um so chenuka is an exchange up um and i think he should be able to convert this since he has an advantage even in uh, the number of pawns yeah d5 if rook d4 okay why decides to play rook f5 to which black answered with rook c5 i think he will go for some g6 f5 and king g7 no rook h5 yeah okay so chenuka wants to play a4 to trap the bishop c4 by white and now i think b takes c4 no he has a different plan in his mind he's going for a4 we'll see how hashan and mesada are doing in the meantime all right so mesada has won the game uh daham and palita are still continuing so we can see very exciting games after bishop g4 white has not captured instead he has gone king c2 um well now it seems like white is doing okay i think knight takes e2 will happen yeah black has sacrificed another piece Mm, the problem with with black's play is that he doesn't have enough pieces for the attack and white is slowly but surely organizing his pieces how about bishop e3 now it looks very tempting to play bishop e3 queen h2 and rook h3 isn't it trapping the queen yeah after rook h3 what is black's move white goes for g takes sorry e takes f5 and g takes f5 yeah this is even better i guess as it turned out with a clear win for white so well played by the hum he backs another win so i think he's doing well today uh in the game lama hevage shakya they have made a draw let's get new game so we have chenuka against vitanarachi gamini yapa 
against Rajinikanth. Whoa, all right. That's a good username though. Um, okay, so Chenuka against Vikanarachi. What's going on? So we have the hedgehog again. Um, Chenuka has gone for an advanced structure, which I think is really a good one. Uh, he has ideas of playing, you know, bishop c2 and going for queen d3, queen h7 in case of short castling by black. And I think he's well prepared today. This is a good strategy against uh, the hippo. Playing h4 and breaking open the king side. Yeah. Uh, well, white can even play b3 now and break open the queen side structure as well as the king side structure. Queen c1 is also fine. So let's move on to this board. Gaminiyapa against Rajini Khan. Um, so we have equal number of pieces. Uh, Black has a pawn majority on the queen side since white has doubled pawns on the e5. Yeah, black is going for active play on the d file, which I think is really good. Now queen c7. Seemingly winning a pawn on e5. I think this is really a good position for Arjini Khan. Never knew he was a good chess player though. <laughs> okay, so Shaki against Taru. Um, so black is having yeah, black is having an extra pawn on a7. Looks like a good position for black. Black is threatening rook takes b7. I don't think white can exchange all the pieces because then the resulting endgame, bishop versus knight endgame, should be winning for black. So white will have to exchange one pair of rooks and play rook b8. But I'm not sure about rook c3 though, because white's back rank is also weak. Yeah, that's why he can't go active with rook b8. He will have to play a defensive move like rook b3, bishop e7. Uh, that's a slightly better end game for black. In the meantime, uh, Chenuka has won against Nartavi. Uh, yeah, he's already playing his next game. So that was a game from the previous round. Um, Gamini Apa against Rajini Khan. They have gotten into this pawn end game, which is completely winning, I guess. Okay, black has a pawn on d4, but this is tricky. Is it really winning? After h4, um, whoa, isn't it a blocked position? No, very well played. Yes, a5 is the move. That is the answer. Now after king d3 and king c5. Very well played by Rajini Khan. Yes, it's not a draw at all. Okay, so he's winning there. We have dungeon against dark alive spirit at the top board. Um, yeah, another Sicilian close. It seems like Dark Alive Spirit doesn't mind playing with an IQP on d5. So she is continuously going for this play. And uh, white players are always playing uh, the Sicilian closed against her. Maybe they are aiming at the d5 pawn. But she's playing very active chess. Um, that's the correct strategy for black if black has an IQP. All right, so Chenuga against Vitana Arachi, they are still playing. As I told you before, uh, Chenuga chose a good strategy and he has already won a piece. He's a minor piece ahead. And I think he has very good chances of winning the game. Um, yeah, Rajinikant is winning with so many extra pieces. And we have a result here. Taru has won against Shakya. In the meantime, 
dungeon and dark alive spirit they are still playing it out this is going to be a very long and tough game for both sides a very instructive one as well i'm pretty sure since these two players are uh, very strong ones very good players in their own right this is going to be a very very exciting game all right so let's move on and see how daham and ruidu are doing and we have mesander playing against chess 454 daham versus ruidu they are playing out the middle game we have um, almost an equal number of pieces yep it is but opposite color bishops white is currently putting pressure on the b7 pawn um, yes black i think hesitated to play rook b8 because of the bishop on f4 and black is creating counterplay which is good news for black uh, now can't white play queen takes b7 yeah this looks slightly better for white after queen takes b7 rook takes b7 in case of rook takes d4 um yeah knight takes c6 i think white is a pawn up there yeah white will have to play very precisely and we have a full-blooded fight that had ended in a draw Mesada versus chess 454 we couldn't see the game but it must have been a very fighting game all right so chenuka versus vitana arachi we are they, these guys are still playing this is amazing these guys are still playing and vitana arachi is a fighter he's not giving up at all uh, he would like to play h4 next so white has to be careful about black's pa past pawn on the h file um well i guess rook f1 no he's going for knight f3 and knight e5 yeah he's trying to keep things simple which is a good thing when you are playing with increment so knight f4 rook g1 yes and white is winning the pawn on g3 this should be curtains for black yeah we have a result here uh, Rajinikanth has finished his game. He had won against Garmini Yapa. And what's going on? Yeah. It's a game that we looked at a little while ago. Dungeon and Dark Alive Spirit, they are still playing it out. And now things have changed. Uh, I think Black has gotten a better version uh, of an IQP. Um, not sure about the decision of taking on d4, but it's obvious that black is trying to attack white down the a8 to h1 diagonal on light squares. But yeah, after bishop e3, what's going on? Rook d2 is my guess. Yeah, if rook takes d2, then whoa, I thought rook takes e2, but okay, that's a checkmating threat. Yes, so black can't take the pawn on c2. And now rook c1, I guess. Yeah. Can be a draw. We'll see. Uh, in the meantime, Daham is playing ex extremely well today. So he has won against Ruidu. Uh, it's time to have a look at new games. So we have Nethil Heripetia against Kosala Sandeepa for the first time in this event and what's going on in there. Yeah. By the time we join, Corsola is winning his game. Rookie one mate is there. I think he will go for it. No. And now finally, rookie one finishes things off. All right. Let's have a look at the game between DIA34 and Farsa Klogzi. Once again, my apologies if I'm not pronouncing your names right. 
I'm very sorry. Some names are uh, new to me. I thought Fase Cloxi is Spanish, guessing by the name, but apparently he's not a Spanish dad. He's a Sri Lankan. I'm curious to know who Fase Cloxi is. It's a nice name. It's a nice name to have. Uh, this seems like a knight of Sicilian. Maybe the Adams attack with h3 and g4. Rook d2. Ooh. What's wrong with knight takes d2? Yep, king takes d2. Was he forced to sacrifice the piece? Not sure. I think Farsek Logs is doing really well here. He's threatening rook f2 check. Mm. Yeah, rook f1, rook takes, bishop takes, and maybe queen c5 with the idea of playing queen f2. And aiming to play king c7, king b8. He goes for queen b6. I think pretty much with the same idea of playing queen f2. All right. So what's, what's going on in here? Chenuka has managed to convert his advantage in material. Finally, after a big fight, uh, we saw this, these results earlier. Uh, dungeon against Dark Alive Spirit. This is a draw. This is a draw. Um, Chenuka is playing against Taru. This is amazing, right? I mean, they're getting games one after another, and I don't know how they're managing this. They are playing one and a half hours of chess without a break, and they are playing very well uh, too. I mean, I have no complaints about anything at all. They are playing high quality chess, uh, and they are fighting it out. This is great. This is what we expect from uh, uh, juniors, right? They are treating us with uh, exciting chess every weekend. So Chenuka against Taru. Uh, Chenuka has the advantage of two bishops and he is a pawn ahead. Yeah, I expect bishop. No, I was going to say bishop a3, but then rook d8. Is it a problem? Rook f3, bishop g4 is there. Uh, I expect rook f3, because if the bishop moves, rook takes d2 will happen. And bishop g4, rook e3. All these moves are forced. White is threatening h3. Black will have to do something before white does uh, expand on the king side, starting with h3. Maybe rook d7 with the idea of playing rook a d8 after h3. Maybe it's something that black can try. Um, H3, rook c d8, bishop f1. No, black is going for bishop b6. Okay. All right. So we'll have a quick look at chess 454 against Sudu Wadu. I'm sorry, Sudu Wadevage. Uh, I think black is doing well. There should be a mate somewhere. So queen g2 check, king f4, rook f3, yep. Yeah, that is a mate, right? Queen h2 check, I think is almost, no, oh, but king b6 is there. This is interesting. Isn't that a mate? <laughs> That's very strange. If there's nothing that black can do. Yes, he will have to be careful about queen f8 check followed by queen b8 mate. I think that's a good practical move by black. Yeah, queen e8. Rook e1 and queen d8. Very good. Very well played by black. Yeah. So we have uh, dungeon against Vitan Arachi. Uh, dark alive spirit against Sudu Aduage. Let's have a look at dungeon against Vitanarachi. 
we are playing a Vienna opening for the very first time that you are seeing this. Uh, but it transposed into a King's, King's Indian attack with a knight on c3. I was tempted to call it a Vienna because of the knight on c3 and the pawn on e4, because that's a similar line with g3 and bishop g2 in Vienna. But I think in that line, white's knight goes to e2. Uh, so this resembles the King's Indian attack more than a Vienna. So it's going to be a complicated game with a board full of pieces. Let's move on to Dark Alive Spirit against Suduwadu again. Um, this looks like a French advance. Yeah, probably a French advance. Mm. Okay, so White is going for a Dark Squares Bishops exchange, which is favorable for her if it happens. And I expect bishop takes e7 and knight bd2. Yeah, typically white wants to go knight e1, f4, and f5. That's white's attack. And maybe white can think of expanding on the queen side with a4 and a5. White is playing a very straightforward attack. Uh, I expect knight g5 and queen h5 or h5 from white. I think this is a good game from white. Uh, she is the one who is attacking. Um, yeah, we saw this game earlier. And we have a result here. We have Farsi Closi winning against DIA34. Chenuk and Taru are still playing. Um, White will capture the bishop with his rook, I guess. No, he's going for the king. Uh, White has a very clear plan of pushing his pawn all the way up to e8. So rook f5 check, king g1, I guess. And maybe rook f8 and rook e8, but I think king f8 and king e8, it's not possible because of rook a check in the end. Yeah, rook f8 has to be played. And now e7 and maybe rook a7. Yeah, to take on b7. This looks like a good game for white, but a lot of play is left. Um, so we'll see Shakya TC against Warana Ilankorn. We are seeing Warana for the very first time at top boards. Uh, what do we have here? We have a position with equal number of pieces with one indifference, uh, one imbalance, I must say, I'm sorry, with one imbalance with black having a bishop against white's knight. As I was speaking, white took a pawn on a5 and he's a pawn ahead. Mm, yeah, I think as a plan, white has rook a c1 and c5 or white can bring his queen back and try to push his a pawn to create a potential passer. I think white is doing fine, but for the moment, black is threatening, rook takes d4 to win two knights just for a rook. Uh, white would not like to play rook d1 because it will pin his f3 knight. Yeah, so black is creating some play Black is asking questions from white and white will have to be quick. He has only around 25 seconds left. Yeah, he's going for rook ad1. I think he uh, didn't have any other move. That's why he was forced to go there. Uh, so we are in the very last phrase of the game, Chenuka against Taru. Um, this should be a draw. Yeah, I think the pawns will get exchanged and the game will end in a draw. Yeah, this seems to be a draw. Uh, Dungeon and Vitana Arachi. Vitana Arachi has a great advantage in time. The position 
seems, yeah, the position is also good for Vitana Archie because he's a knight up. Yeah, I predict a win for Vitana Archie in this game. Let's move on to another game. We'll see how Dark Alive Spirit against Sudu Wadu Gay is doing. Uh, yeah, Black is completely winning. Uh, yeah, 92. Yes, this should be winning for Black. So let's move on to Chenu, Chenu Kantaru. They are still playing it out. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this is a draw, of course. Yeah, king f7. If king d7, I think rook d3 check is good enough. Yeah, and once again, whoa, black is going for king g6, and now yeah, black is going to sacrifice the rook for the c pawn and win white's rook for his g-pawn. Sorry, for her g-pawn. I think this is the correct strategy, yeah. This will soon end in a draw. So now rook c3, I guess, g2, okay. White should not play, sorry, black should not play g1 because of rook g6 check with a skiver. So black is going king f3. Uh, Okay, and now rook c3, I guess. King, no. White is still trying to ask questions from black. Maybe king f3. No, black is going king f5. Whoa, did white overdo it? He has this idea of skiva, but now rook g7 was winning. Uh oh rook g7 was winning. It was a bridge. Uh, we learned that technique of building a bridge in uh, the Lucina position. Black had that. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on and see some other games. So we have Shark here um, against Warren Lankorn. We have a result there. Warren has won the game. Uh, yeah, as expected, Sudhu Aduage has won against Dark Alive Spirit. We have Farsay Klogzi at the top board playing against Dungeon. They are playing out a complicated middle game. Uh, it's hard to guess the opening. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, black is doing fine because now when white moves the rook away, can't black take on a2 and be a pawn ahead? This is probably a Karokan classical, yeah, with knight takes f6 and e takes f6. If bishop takes a2, now b3 is a move. Yeah, so black is not willing to take the risk and now he's threatening bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3 and knight e5, trying to win material. Uh, I think black has very good ideas. Yeah, rook d2 is also a very good move, very well played by white. Black wouldn't dare taking on f3 because that will give white a very strong light squares bishop along the h1 to a8 diagonal. Yeah, these two players are playing very good chess. They are not making any blunders. They are maintaining the position and they have firm control over their positions. So king g2, uh, but that will allow black to play knight g4. Yeah, so knight d4 was played. Wow, this is very good play by both sides. How about knight g4 right now? Isn't it a problem for white? Bishop a5, okay. Rook d1, I guess. Yep. Maybe knight g4 was there. Maybe. 
Okay. So let's see how Chenuka and Taru are doing. Taru has managed to win. Okay. I think she tricked Chenuka into making a mistake. And with Anara, she has won against Dungeon. Yeah, we saw these results. So let's go ahead and pick new games for us to view. So we have new players climbing up the ladder. Uh, we have Vitan Arachi against Mesada. Mesada is in time pressure, but he has some play. Mm, King d7, and now he's intending bishop d3, but white has knight d2. Yep. Maybe rook a1 or rook d1. He will have to put pressure on white's back rank. We'll move and see how Gamini Yapa and Sudu Aduage play. Um, we have yeah, a middle game, end game type of position with one imbalance. Bishop against knight. I think white is slightly better here. Yes, exactly, because of the weak d6 pawn. I was thinking rook a d1 and c4, but white did not waste any time attacking the pawn on d6. This is very direct play. Ooh, what happened there? Uh oh, black blundered big time. Okay, that can happen. It's very unfortunate end to the game. But yes, Garmin Yapa will be very happy with what happened in his game. Uh, so Batman ID against Lama Hebage. Lama Hebage has won the game by the time we join in. So Farsay Clogs is still playing against Dungeon. Um, this is an exciting game. Uh, Black is active. Black has a rook against White's bishop and knight, but I think objectively White should be uh, slightly better, but it's not clear at all. It's not clear at all because black has four pawns against white's two on the king side, and that can create problems for white. Um, in the meantime, Vitan Arachi has won against Mesada. Let's go ahead and see Nitum's game Nitum versus Dark Alive Spirit. What's going on in there? Okay, so Dark Alive Spirit is winning. Um, it's almost over. Uh, we have Chenuka against Kosala Sandeepa. They are playing out a French defense two knights. I think, yeah, I was expecting e takes d5, e takes d5, and then d4. Uh, knight c6, maybe bishop b5, yeah. I think this is really a good system for white against uh, French players, especially in speed events. Now queen takes d8 or bishop takes c6, yeah, will give white a good end game, an easy end game to play. Okay, so Chenoka is totally prepared today. We have Batman ID against Hashan, and we have a newcomer. Satira Rupa Singha against Varana Ilan Korn. Varana has gone for the Kole system and he has gotten uh, the famous Pillsbury attack. Uh, Black sacrifices the pawn, seeing how dangerous the attack can be. But yeah, I think Y is really better. Black is going for f5, but now white has bishop f3, yeah, with uh, good play. White goes for bishop d3, but still white is better, for sure. Let's have a look at Batman ID against Hashan. White seems to be having, whoa, look at white's king, wow. <laughs> Reminds me of David Navara. He's very famous for these king walks. Uh, even though Nigel Short is uh, famous for his king walk, uh, 
if you guys have seen that game, I don't remember this op his opponent. I think it was Jan Timan, if I'm not mistaken. But David Navarro has more than one game with these kind of king walks. Is queen takes f6 a move? No, rook takes d8. Yeah, why not? And now, and now queen e7 check. Knight f7 and rook takes h8. Isn't it winning? Oh, can he play rook takes e5? No, he's going for the other plan. Yeah, rook takes h8. This looks winning for white. And the king on h5, it's safe. Yeah, it is a safe piece. And now queen f8 was a mate, okay. But white wants to play, yeah, he wants to use the other rook as well. So rook e8 finishes things off. Wow, this must have been a great game. A thrilling game by Hush, uh, Batman ID. Wow, okay. So he's a force to reckon with. Uh, in the meantime, I think Satira has a very good position, uh, which he will try to win. Pase Kloxi, what has happened there? Pase Kloxi has won has gained, and has gained a massive amount of ELO points as well, 104 rating points. So he must be very happy with the win. Uh, yeah, we saw this game. And Gamini Apa has won against Sudhu Adulke. Yeah, we saw that game earlier. So let's have a look at Dungeon against Palita. Um, and Dark Alive Spirit against Pase Kloxi. In the meantime, Chenuka is still playing with Kosala Sandeepa. Whoa. Okay, things are not that clear. I thought Chenuga got a very good position after the opening, but uh, now I think Black is fine. Black is doing fine. Is it a draw after rook b3 check? No, no draws, play on. Yeah, this is great. No one is interested about draws. Is white going to play a rook to b3? Yep. So white wants to play king a5 check, I guess. So white is going for a king walk. This is very fearless play by white. Okay. So we'll have a look at this one. Palita against Dungeon. Definitely a Karo Khan exchange. No, no. It can't be a Karo Khan exchange. Maybe a French exchange or a Petrov. It's hard to guess. Um, so knight h2, I wonder what the idea is. Because knight h2 looks, it's difficult for me to understand why it has to be played. Um, but anyway, what can black do? How can black improve the position? Uh, usually when the pawn is on h7, Black players prefer playing bishop g6 and exchanging those bishops because the bishop on h5 is not very active. Even though it's uh, controlling the h5 to d1 diagonal, it seems as if it's hitting thin air. Maybe white wants to play knight f1 and knight g3 to embarrass the h5 bishop. Yeah. So we'll have a look at this one. Dark alive spirit against Farsi Klozi. Um, okay, definitely a Sicilian, without a doubt. So white is threatening, rook takes d7, check. What should black do? Can black play knight c5? Queen takes h7, check. Uh, I guess, yeah, queen f7, and maybe queen takes g6. Are there any tactics that I'm missing? How about rook takes d7? Does that work? No. The queen on f7 is protected. Yeah, white wants to keep queens on the board. 
and uh, I think black can't play queen takes f3 because of queen e6 check. It can be problematic. So I think white has a good attack going on, but we have to focus on other games as well. Chenuka versus Kosala Sandi. But Kosa has won. He had created a passed pawn on the edge file and has managed to exchange rooks. That's a good game by Kosala. I think he defended well. Satira Rupa Singh has won his game against Varana. Um, let's have a look at Janukshan for the first time. And Vimansa, she is also there for the first time. So let's go into Janukshan against Taru's game. And Taru is winning an exchange. Is she? No, she is going to get. Yeah, she's winning an exchange, of course. Yeah, she's winning an exchange. This must be a French exchange variation. So black is better after bishop takes e3. Let's move on. Vimansa versus Ampukure. Another bishop versus knight thing. What happened? All right, so Vimansa won the game. Okay, so Ampukure had resigned. Maybe he didn't want to play uh, this end game any further because of white's extra pawn, the pass pawn on c3. That's an interesting decision. Uh, Dungeon and Palita, they are playing and uh, Dungeon is, sorry, Palita is winning the knight on f1. So we can expect a win for black there. Um, Dark Alive Spirit has won against Farsay Cloxy. This must have been a good game, uh, a good attacking game from white. Um, let's move on and see how Dark Alive Spirit is doing against Sudu Aduake. And we have Warane Ilanga Korn against Nethil Hiripitiya. I think we are seeing Nethil for the first time at top boards. So we'll jump straight into his game. Um, so we have probably a French exchange. It's very hard to guess. Sometimes you can get this position from uh, the Petrov as well. So yeah, can be a Petrov, but Nettle doesn't play the Petrov, so a French, most probably. Um, yeah, the typical, you know, black is solid, white has more space, but it's equalish. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about h6. I think black players prefer playing knight f8 and knight g6 without playing h6. So that in case of bishop takes g6, they can take back with the h pawn. But black is doing well. Black is aiming for exchanges. And I think bishop d6 is a good move. Let's see this one. Dark alive spirit against Suduwadu. I'm very sorry. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Suduwadeva gay. Oh, OK. I'm very sorry. My apologies to Suduwadeva gay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, definitely a French advance. Yeah. Long casting. I'm very sorry. My apologies once again. Do they again? Yeah, this is a close position. I think Bishop A3 with the idea of playing B5 is an idea, but if white plays bishop a3, black will go b5 now. Uh, I think black has to play bishop a5. Sorry, black has to play b5 and block white's bishop. Yeah. Um, white can play a5 and totally close down the queen side and then go for knight bd2 and a king's eye attack. Um, but this is typical for this variation in the French advance. Okay. So Warana against Nethil. Whoa, what happened there? 
Yeah, I think Warren is winning. Yeah, he's clearly better. Yeah, he's a rook up. So let's move on. Palita is a piece up, he's a bishop up. Uh, we looked at this game and its result. Uh, Taru has managed to convert her advantage in material against Januk-shan. Um, yeah, it's time to have a look at few new games. We have Korsala against Taru. We'll jump straight into that game. Uh, probably a French exchange once again. Black wins a pawn with knight takes d4. I think she will go into an end game since she's a, a clear pawn up. Maybe f6 to castle long or short castling. Yeah, there's no risk of getting checkmated now on the king side. So black can definitely castle short. White is attacking the knight on e7 and I expect rook f8. Or rook a8 for that matter. Yeah, rook a8. Okay, so black is a pawn up there. Black is slightly better. In the meantime, Palita has converted his advantage against the dungeon. So he's caused a valuable win there. Yeah, we saw all these games. And let's go ahead and have a look at chess 454 against Shakya. Whoa. So by the time we join in, yeah, chess 454 is already a piece up. And I think he's doing well. Um, what's going on in this game? Okay, so it's, um, so they have simplified the position a little bit. Uh, white is going for the c4 break. White wants to open up the queen side since black's king is in there. But black is doing a great job of controlling the c4 square. Uh, yeah, I expect knight c4. Okay. What is the end game after queen takes c4, queen takes c4, and knight a5 check? Yeah, maybe black is better because of white's backward pawn on c3. So white doesn't want to go in for that end game. That's why white played bishop a1. But now the bishop on a1 is very passively placed, and I think black can think of playing e5 at some point. Black is going for bishop takes c5, and I expect d takes c5. Of course, this is also better for black because of his superior knight against white's a1 bishop. Okay. Warren against Nethil. Yes, Warren won that game. Korsala and Taru. Taru is an exchange ahead, so she's doing well there. In the meantime, Chess 454 has won his game against Shakya. Okay. So we are into the final 20 minutes of the tournament. Uh, I would like to have a look at our leaderboard at the moment. Kosala Sandeepa is leading with 29 points, and Vita Narachi is following him very close with 28 points. And Taru 2005 is also up there. So you guys can see that these players are on a streak, uh, which is an advantage. Garmini Appa is also up there with 28 points, but he's not on a streak. So that's a slight disadvantage to him. We have Mr. BIG101. We have uh, Sudhuva Devake. Once again, I'm struggling with the name, I'm sorry. We have Palita, Fase Kloxi, Chenuka, and Subasinga at the top. We couldn't see a game of Subasinga today, even though he's at the top. So we'll see whether he is there. No, we have Dinod Abiratna against Hashan. I wonder whether I looked at any of Dinod's games today. So we'll have a look at it. 
look at his game against Hashan. Um, so Hashan is a knight up for the moment. Yeah, he's playing well. Uh, Counter-attacking the bishop on e4. I think that he should be able to convert his advantage. He's a very good player. Mm, yeah, I expect rook takes d4 and knight takes f6 here. Uh, the knight is not getting trapped. Yeah, why well, can always play knight h5? Or oh, is he getting trapped? Ooh. Knight takes h7. Yeah, white has rook c7. So white will be fine. White will be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as expected. Suduwadu so okay. Um, yeah, with his positional advantage, he had managed to convert it into a uh, material advantage. So he has managed to uh, get a winning position. He has the queen against the bishop because the bishop on a1 was so badly placed, white's whole position didn't look healthy at all. So now queen d3 or e2 could have won the bishop. But I think it's just a matter of time. White will convert his advantage. Um, yeah, we saw this game. So let's get rid of some of our um, old games. Uh, Taru has managed to win. We have Hashan playing against Dinoj. Uh, we have a battle at the top board. Taru against Dungeon. Chenuga against Vitan Arachi. So let's have a look at Taru against Dungeon. Um, another King's Indian attack type of position. I expect Bishop G2 from white and Knight F5 from black. I think white has a positional advantage because he has managed to get rid of black's light squares bishop. So his bishop is going to totally dominate the h1 to a8 diagonal, and sometimes the bishop can move to e4 and support white's kingside attack. That's what white should be aiming at in these positions. All right, let's going on in here. So Chanuka has, oh, Chanuka versus Vitan Arachi. Yeah, Vitan Arachi managed to win the game, right? So we have results there. Let's go down, let's see how Varana Ilan Korn and Chess 4-5 are doing. And we have Garmini Apa against Janukshan as well. We'll have a look at that game as well. Varana against Chess 4-5-4. They're playing, oof, hard to guess the opening. Seems like, I don't know, I have no idea. Um, yeah, black can go b5 and I guess bishop e2 from white because bishop b3 runs into c4. Mm, yeah, bishop e2 from white and maybe bishop takes b2 from black. I think black can grab that pawn after b5. Warren will have to speed up. He's down to 30 seconds. Uh, Garmini Apa and Januk Shan. So black has six pawns against white's five, but white has an annoying passer on e5. Mm. So maybe white should try to go queen e3 and penetrate into black's position with queen b6 and queen c7, but black is, black is very quick. Black played queen f4, exchanging queens. And now after king h3 and king f5, I think black is better yeah. because white is losing that pawn. So very well calculated play by Januk Shan there. I think Amin Yapa will be in trouble. We have a result here. Dinod has won against Hashan. And Taru and Dungeon are still playing. So we'll have a look at uh, Chenuka against Dark Alive Spirit. We'll try to cover all the top boards since we are into the final final 15 sec uh, minutes of the of the event. 
uh, Chenugu seems to be having a good position, good attacking position with a queen on d5. So rightly so, black is trying to exchange queens, but what if white takes on c5 and plays rook c1? Isn't black losing a piece? Uh, he has gone for bishop takes g6, king e7, and bishop e4. Now bishop b7, or bishop d7. One of these moves are expected, and rook e1. I think this is a good position for white. Yeah, black's king is also not safe. You can expect a win for white there, but anything can happen as we as we have seen throughout the event in Blitz Chess. This is a winning position for black. Okay. So we will move over to Taru versus Dungeon. We have an end game here with white threatening to penetrate into black's position with king c4. So if white gets king d5 or b5 in, black will be in trouble. And I guess king c6 because of that. But no, black is going king e6. Uh, black will have to calculate what will happen after king b5, king d5, and king a6. Uh, yeah, black seems to be much quicker than white. And that's why white is not interested in a loving black Black's king to penetrate into white's position via d5, but now black has king f5. So yeah, black is doing well. Black seems to be doing well. Dungeon is having uh, the better of it in this endgame. Uh, yeah, we saw this result with Arachi winning against Chenuka. And in the meantime, Warana Ilankorn has won against chess 454. Okay. A uh, sharp game, and he had managed to trap Black's king in a mating net. Uh, Janukshan has won against Garmini Yapa. And these two are still battling it out. And Black, uh, yeah, has gotten the better of it. Black is a bishop up. White has an annoying passed pawn on h6. Um, now I wonder whether black can play a move like bishop e3 and keep his extra piece. Or should black play bishop takes h6? No, I don't think so. I think black should go bishop e3 here, threatening rook h2. And I expect h7 from white, but after bishop d4, I think white's bishop can take care of the h8 square and stop black's pawn from promoting and then pushes, uh, push her on pawns with, uh, with a5 and b4 on the queen side. Now, this looks like a good position for black and co a convertible one. Uh, yeah, so this is almost a winning game for black after Bishop takes g5. Oh, no, not bishop takes g5, yeah. Because then white will create a pass pawn on the queen side. So knight c3 and now king takes g5. So these guys are playing extremely well. As you can see, they are even seeing what the opponents are trying to do, uh, which is impressive at blitz chess because we tend to miss uh, little details and especially uh, opponents plans in this chess but these guys are very experienced with this time control it seems they are playing these games in the quality of classical chess okay um we'll move on and see the game of satira rupa singha and mesanda we didn't see Satira for a while at the top. So these two players are playing a middle game, probably a Kali system. It's hard to guess. But by the pieces, the knight on e5, the bishop on b2, and another knight on c4, it looks like a Kali system. Um, whoa, is black sacrificing? Yeah, black is sacrificing a piece. 
I wonder what would have happened after bishop a5, but black gave it away. Yeah, so Sati raised a piece up, but black has two pawns as compensation. Mm, yeah, queen c3. White will try to attack along the a1 to g7 diagonal. Now queen d4, knight c2, yep. Excuse me for a second. Okay, here we are, queen g4, knight takes e 3 yes. Things are getting very complicated. And I expect um, knight takes e3 from white, and after knight takes e3, queen g3, okay. Now knight takes f1 is possible because the knight will be attacking the queen on g3. And rook takes f1. Yeah, I think white missed a few tactics. This shouldn't have happened to him. Uh, now, I think black has enough pieces. Maybe black is even slightly better because black has six pawns against white's three and after f6, white's attack, uh, it's not going anywhere. Black can simply play king h8 and be fine. Yeah, then black will play rook c8 and try to gain counterplay with rook c2 and queen d5. So I think black managed to defend the position and to get advantage out of tactics. Uh, so Dungeon has won against Taru. Uh, with Anarachi, we saw this result a while ago against Chenuka. Um, yeah, we saw this result too. Warner against Chess 454. And Black has won against, uh, sorry, Dark Alive Spirit has won against Chenuka. Let's quickly move on to our top boards. We have Vita Anarachi playing against Taru and Dark Alive Spirit playing against Farsi Kopli, Klogsi, I'm sorry, and Dungeon. We have a newcomer to the top, uh, J. Vipushanan. Um, he's playing against Dungeon, so they are playing out a middle game and Dungeon is already uh, going for the kill. He's going for the kill. He was a knight up. He sacrificed the knight for the attack and I expect rook f1, yeah, Why is definitely having the better position there. In the meantime, Farsay, Cloxy, Dark Alive Spirit, these two are playing another Sicilian. As I remember, they played out a very similar game to this a uh, few rounds ago. But now I think Black has found the, the better setup. With the knight on e5, the king side is safe. The f7 pawn in particular. But white is attacking. White is active. So white is attacking the queen with knight d4 and Black's pawn on b5 is about to fall. Um, yeah, knight takes d3, a very important intermezzo. I think white will go c takes d3 here. Maybe rook takes d3 is also possible. I don't think white will play knight takes d6. Uh, so let's try to calculate. Knight takes c6, knight takes f4, no. White is going for c takes d3, and white will try to get his rooks into play with moves like rook c1 and rook h7. So this is going to be another exciting battle from these two players. Uh, so Satira against Mesada. Satira has won a bishop, so he is doing well. Uh, yeah, I think this is a winning game for Satira after king f6. How is Vitan Arachi doing? Vitan Arachi is the lead at the moment and this is a critical game uh, because number one ranked player is playing against the number two ranked player. Um, so these are the very last games of the event. So these games are vital to the outcome of the event. So c6 was played. Queen c7 looks like a move. Uh, Taru is already a piece up. 
Um, yeah, so queen c6 pins the pawn, but now bishop d7. Uh, so we'll stick to this game for a little while and see how these players are doing. Now knight takes d5 is a move. It was hanging in the air for a while, taking advantage of this the pin down the fourth rank. Yeah, I think black missed it in the time pressure, but still black is fine with the extra piece. Um, okay, so black has a dark squares blockade and black would love to play c takes d5. So white takes on c6. Okay, I thought that black would play knight takes c6 and go for knight d4. Um, so white is attacking d6. Black defended the pawn. And I expect rook d8. No, very good. Black is counter-attacking. Black is playing d5. That's a plan in such positions because you don't want to nurse a backward pawn. And whenever you can play d5 in the typical Sicilian fashion, you should go for it and break white center. And I think after d5, black is doing fine. Black has an extra piece as well as the better position. Um, yeah, Satira has won. And we need to check the game between Dark Alive Spirit and Farsi Closi. Okay, so Dark Alive Spirit uh, has managed to go into an end game, which I think is better for black because the pawn on g5 looks very loose. Um, I expect knight c3 from her. Now she goes for king c4. What will happen after bishop takes b5? King takes b5 and rook g3. Or can black play bishop takes e4? The problem with bishop takes e4 is that white can play rook e1. And f5 is not a move because of g takes f6. Yeah, I think black will play rook g3 now and win the pawn on g5. No, he's going for the other pawn. And now he adjusts himself and go for the g pawn. Yeah, this is a better position for Farsi float. See, I think white's king is also not ideally placed and this should be winning for black. Yeah, for sure. So we are into the final four minutes of our event. And now we can see a slight change in the leaderboard. It seems like Vitan Arachi is running away with the event. He has 40 points, eight points ahead of the second seeded Taru. Uh, and he's on a streak. And you can see the other players are not on streaks. Uh, Taru is at the second place, Kosal is at the third place, while Garmini Yapa is doing well. He's at the fourth place. Vimansa is at the fifth place, and Palita is at the sixth place. Uh, Suduva Devake is seventh for the moment. Chenuki is at eighth place. Dinoth is at ninth place, and Mr. BIG101 is at tenth place. So I think. Vita Narachi is poised to win the event, but I think there's one game to go uh, for him to confirm his place. The others are fighting it out. So Chenuka and Dungeon are playing against each other. Did he miss knight takes f7? No, not really, because the bishop on f4 is hanging. Okay, so this is definitely. Uh, the Scandinavian. I think black is doing fine. We'll quickly see how our leader is doing. Vitan Arachi against Taru. Uh, yeah, Taru is having the better game with an extra rook. I think she will win this game, but it won't uh, do much of a damage to Vitan Arachi because he's already leading the event with eight odd points. Um, in the meantime, this game, yeah, it has ended in, fa in favor of Farsi Kloxi. He has won against Dark Alive Spirit. We are into the final two minutes of the event. 
and Dungeon has won against Vipu Shannon. And we'll see how the other guys are doing. We'll go down and have a look at SR Nagasinghe. <coughs> I'm sorry. Because we are seeing him for the very first time in the event. They are playing out uh, Rai Lopez, the fashionable D3 line, not the classical C3, D4. Uh, Bishop C2, I guess. Yep. Now Bishop C5 was played. Costly. D6. Yeah, they are playing out the opening. Now I think Bishop B7. Okay. That goes for short castling. Rook E1 and Knight F7. Can't white play D4 and claim an edge after Knight H7 because Knight H7 looks odd. Yeah. Whoa. They made a draw. Okay, that's interesting. All right. Um, yeah, so Taro is winning. In the meantime, Chenuka and Dungeon, they are playing it out. Chenuka is currently at the eighth place, while Dungeon is at the 13th place. And these guys will have to finish their games off uh, within another 20 seconds for these results to get counted. Um, whoa, this is not going to end that soon because this is going to be a queen end game in which what happened there? Okay, so this is winning for black, but the clock strikes zero and we have the results. So we have Kosa Sandeepa placing third, Taro 2005 placing second, and Vita Narachi placing first. So I would like to congratulate those three players. And we'll have a quick look at the leaderboard. We have Gamini Yapa at fourth place. We have Fase Kloxi placing fifth, Lama Hebuge placing sixth, Vimansa placing seventh, Palita placing eighth, Dinota Beratna placing ninth, and uh, Sutua Devage placing tenth. So, congratulations to all of you. You guys are the winners of the third event of our series. So, we have five more events to go. I will update all the results and the leaderboard and how your schools are doing in my Facebook page. Please have a look at it. Um, everything will be updated by tomorrow morning. Uh, I would like to thank you all for taking part in this event and to all the viewers uh, for staying with me. I hope you guys enjoyed the live broadcast and I hope to see you guys next week, next Saturday for another exciting event. And until then, I wish you guys a very happy week. Good night.